Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I'm the editor of this book. I am pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Eva Jajit Elliott, author of Chapter 18, New Jersey School Libraries 2035. Eva is the subject librarian in the School of Education at the College of New Jersey. She has previous experience as a K through 12 librarian. Her research interests include research skills of high school and first year college students, diversity and equity in collection management and barriers to information. She is also an executive board member for New Jersey Association of School Librarians and NJASL past president. Throughout chapter 18, Eva uses the New Jersey school libraries to exemplify the important role of school librarians in becoming leaders who have a seat at the table when school education is being discussed. New Jersey school librarians successfully advocated for legislation of a new statewide standard focused on information literacy in schools. Their success came down to the partnerships they built with multiple organizations and key stakeholders. She highlights how the lessons learned in New Jersey could help other libraries advocate for more resources and support for their users and staff. I'd like to welcome you, Eva and DJ uh, Elliott. It's really nice to have you here today. So I'd like to um, open up our conversation today by asking you to briefly describe what your vision is for the future of libraries in 2035. My hope is that with everything that has been happening over the past couple of years in the United States, uh, librarians have proven themselves to be leaders and especially educational leaders. And as I wrote in the chapter, uh, New Jersey has taken on big challenges. Uh, we have made ourselves known to many different associations, uh, many different educational uh, organizations and institutions, including the State Board of Education, Department of Education, um, and many, many, many different associations um, across the state. Um, and we have proven ourselves to be um, very well prepared um, conversation holders when it comes to education in many different facets, whether it applies to holding on to state laws or sta state regulations and state standards and applying them or helping schools apply them in our uh, school districts and school building, or whether it comes to taking initiatives and preparing our teachers to take um, additional educational challenges, trying out new things, be their partners and sounding boards, or sometimes bringing new innovative creative ideas to challenge our educators, our colleagues uh, to try something different and something new or to bring new things. Um, in New Jersey, librarians very often have been those people who bring new concepts and new ideas, whether it's technology, digital tools, or different strategies. So my hope is that within the next decade or so, this movement is going to continue and is going to strengthen our role. And it seems like we are building something bigger than just school librarianship here in New Jersey. We are building a very strong um statewide library ecosystem. This word has been used uh, recently in the most recent years across the state of uh, New Jersey, but also across the country as unified uh, movement to prove and show that it's not about putting money towards one type of librarianship, whether it's academic or, or public or school, but about our united efforts to show that all types of librarianship are needed to care for our communities. That's a really inspiring vision and really exciting about the work that you've been able to do in New Jersey. Are there things that concern you about the future? Yes, one of my biggest concern is that we need to keep proving ourselves. We need to keep selling our ideas and concepts to our stakeholders and 
I know that in some school districts, um, we are being told that school librarians are being cut, school library uh, programs are being cut because there is no money. But when you dig a little deeper, it's not necessarily money issue. It's a principle issue. If the stakeholders, if the decision makers, whether it's school administrators or whether it's school board members or parents, if they understand how well-run library program can help the community, they will support it. But they need to be sold on that concept. They need to be proven that if we strengthen the library system, then the community gets stronger as well. So for me, the, the biggest issue here is, are we strong enough to sell ourselves and sell what we bring to the table to all of the decision makers, whether it's on the state, local le level, or even national level? It sounds like we really need to be telling a lot of, having a good way to tell our story about what we're doing and um, it involves a lot of advocacy efforts. Um, what are you most excited about in this future? I think that the excitement comes from the fact that we are starting to be a little bit more proactive and not only reactive. Um, it seems that, um, we have caught up with the changes. We have caught up with all of these new uh, digital technological challenges, and we know how to navigate them and how to address them. Um, most recent um, big news stories, ChatGPT and AI. I know that in the past, all of the technological advances or advancements were scaring off people from um, trusting the librarians. But I think that we as a profession have proven ourselves to understand that we are on that path of ever evolving and changing profession. We are not stagnant and we are ready to go to the next step. We are ready, ready to not only be on, be on top of the changes, but lead with the changes as well. I find this very exciting. It does sound really exciting. Um, it, it really gives hope for the future in terms of what we can be accomplishing and doing. What do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? I think it's going to be technology. Um, I think that um, um, when I was preparing myself for this conversation with you, I was thinking to myself that uh, for thousands of years, libraries were just depositories of information, right? They were just um, warehouses of text, like some of these behind me. Um, and librarians were gatekeepers, right? The librarians were able to give the privilege to access it. Now, with the modern technology, all of this information is available for free as long as you have Wi-Fi. Um, so we are pivoting. We are pivoting our services. It's no longer about access, but about quality of the information. So we are training ourselves when it comes to evaluation of that information, and we are trying to teach our library patrons how to critically evaluate that information. And I think this component is really the hardest here, um, that, that comprehensive and critical thinking piece is really difficult to teach. It's so easy to just fall within your own biases and just keep believing what you have always believed instead of trying to challenge yourself and sometimes people around you. And one more thing, I think that something that um, I want to stress whenever I have conversation with non-library non -library people is that we are professionally trained how to evaluate information. We truly are information specialists, right? So not, not only that access component that has always been so um, visible, but that the second layer of um, critical evaluation of what's in front of you, I think is something that needs to be really truly highlighted in our conversation about um, librarianship. Thank you. Did you have anything that you wanted to say with regard to what you think will have the biggest um, impact on libraries in the next decade? I think in the next decade, it's all going to be still about technology and how we navigate mm -hmm. that. Um, the, the issue here is that 
are we going to get scared and give up because uh, internet and chat GPT is going to take over or are we going to find our own niche? Um, I remember how scared we were of Wikipedia uh, a little while ago, right? And we thought that nobody will be using inter and nobody will be using a uh, library because we have Wikipedia. And what we have learned was that it's a tool like everything else. It's a tool. You can use it to the benefit of your information search and your professional or, or academic growth, or you can hurt yourself with it. And the same is with the technology right, right now as well. Um, as we are developing new tools, some people are developing tools how to discredit these tools, right? So as everybody was uh, being super excited about generating texts, other people were trying to find out how to generate tools to discover how and what was generated and what was independent thought. So I think that technology is going to be, this this issue of technology is going to be very interesting to observe for the next decade. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, there are a lot of changes in store. Uh, I wondered, I know it's only been a few months, but I wondered if any of your thinking has changed since you wrote your chapter uh, and submitted it a few months ago. No, not really. I think that um, when I was writing this chapter um, a few months ago, um, we were in a process of um, creating new additional legislation in New Jersey. And since then, uh, we have mo moved forward with some of our uh, initiatives. So if anything, our position got only stronger. Uh, if anything, in the next um, maybe couple of weeks, uh, you will hear about additional new uh, legislative advances coming from New Jersey and how New Jersey school librarians um, helped around with, with those initiatives. That sounds really exciting. Can't wait to hear that and that wonderful news. Um, do you have any advice for information professionals as they look toward the future, you know, the next 10 years? What 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 do you see? What I am seeing is that we are stronger together. I know it's such a cliche to say. But what I'm seeing is that it's easy to dismiss school librarians when it's just school librarians, but it's a little bit harder when public librarians stand with them, and it's it's even harder when the academic librarians join them. So what I'm seeing here right now is that we need to break out of our silos. We need to break out of our uh closed institutions that don't play well with others and actually invite others to play with us or invite ourselves to play with them. Um, and uh, here in New Jersey, um, we have created a very strong um, professional uh, relationships with public librarians and library association. And um, we have really wonderful um, plans uh, and initiatives coming up with uh, academic librarians as well. And when we initiated these conversations a while ago, we didn't really know how we work, um, what is similar and what is different. But right now we are noticing that um, some of the challenges are the same and we can support each other and we can gain a lot. And let me give you an example. We keep talking about um, uh, research gaps in freshman college students, but have high school librarians ever truly worked together with academic librarians to close these gaps, right? And if academic librarians stay isolated and keep try keep complaining that high school librarians don't prepare students for college, this is not solving the problem. The, we can solve the problem if we start teaching each other what we do and how. And how can we really prepare high school librarians to prepare high school students to be better freshman college students. So uh, my my advice is break outside of your own um, little walls and go and seek others who can challenge you to become a better librarian and who you can help become better librarian and do um, better work. That's great. I think that idea of breaking out of silos is so important and, you know, how we need to be working together is critical. Is there anything um, 
that information professionals can do to better prepare for their desired future beyond what you've discussed or any key competencies you think librarians will need to thrive in the year 2035? I think that for that from what I have been observing, the key component here is um, to be always um, curious and keep in mind that if we want to um, produce a generation of li lifelong le leaders, lifelong learners, lifelong readers, all of these, you know, buzzy words that we have been hearing about, we have to be them first. Right. So if I want my students to grow, I have to grow. If I want to teach my students that they need to go and break outside of their own um, learning discomfort and challenge themselves, I have to be doing that to myself. Right. So I need to keep educating myself, keep seeking for my own professional growth to prove that this is the right way to go. Because if I isolate myself and if I stay uh, with all of those truths that I accumulated only through my college or, or um, professional experiences, um, then I'm not growing. I'm stagnant. I'm, I'm just staying in the same place. So if I go outside and learn myself and be always curious and be always open-minded that I'm not necessarily the one who has all of the knowledge, but I can learn from others. I think this is the key. Always assuming that there's always something more for me to learn. I think that is really sage advice and one that we all need to keep uh, keep close to our hearts as we're um, think at looking at how quickly things are changing around us as well. It's incumbent on us to keep learning and to continue to be curious. So I have one final question for you, and that is a toughie, and that is I'm asking all of the um, uh, people participating in this webcast what to define your view of the future of libraries in six words. So what what would you say to that? This was the biggest challenge. <laughs> find something so big in, in so few words. I wrote down this sentence for myself. Libraries as centers that provide critical resources for growth. And I, under the word growth, you can put so much here, right? Whether it's professional growth or personal growth, intellectual growth, academic growth, but libraries are just the hubs of any form of growth. I like that. Hubs for growth. Yes, I like that. Very um succinct and I think really encapsulates a lot of what you were talking about in the session. So thank you for your contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It has been an absolute pleasure to talk with you today and to hear about your future, vision, your vision of the future for libraries. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sandy, for inviting me to contribute and for having me here today. And I'd like to thank um, our listeners uh, for attending this webcast um, with Eva Jajitz Elliott, um, who is the author of Chapter 18, New Jersey School Libraries 2035. And to view additional author webcasts from the this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen. Thank you again.